as I said, we're going to hit microcytic anemias. And uh, with microcytic anemias, this would be the only time for you in which you would even perhaps think about uh, considering doing a iron study. Clear. So, Dr. Rogers, you're saying with macrocytic, you want to do iron studies? Correct. Normocytic, you want to do iron studies? Correct. And even if you did, well, with uh, macrocytic and then normocytic, the iron studies would come back to be normal. Okay. So, under microcytic, obviously, we're going to work through iron quite a bit. Iron deficiency anemia, anemia chronic disease, and acidoblastic anemia. Then, what about the thalassemias? It has nothing to do with the heme component, right? Don't worry, we'll talk more about this as well. Now, before we get into any of that, I need you to make sure, or I need to make sure you have a proper understanding of this graph. Huge, huge. It'll tell you all the relevant iron study labs that you want to know for microcytic anemias. Begin. The first thing that you want to do always is serum iron. Number one, serum iron. Number two, when iron gets into your body, then uh, it's stored. And by storage, I don't mean what's going on here with the uh, liver and such, but I'm referring, or bone marrow, but what I'm referring to is the fact that here you have ferritin. So ferritin, think of these as more or less being kind of like your uh, a macrophage, okay? So literally, it's going to consume the iron that is then coming in. And in the meantime, of course, you already know about iron, which is Fe. When you put it into your mouth, it's in the form of, good, 3+. plus. That's your ferric, right? Ferric. And what's another name clinically? Ferric. Oh, methemoglobin. Good, right? So ferric. So that's another discussion, and that's something that we've discussed in basic pathology. But uh, ferric is what you're consuming, but that which is used by the body is ferrous. Keep that in mind, because at some point, you need to convert that ferric into ferrous. All right, now, this iron is in your ferritin. Remember, this is perfectly normal. So second lab test for iron study will be ferritin, number two. Next, where you're going to go with this is going to be communication with the liver. Who? Ferritin. So the liver, think of it, the liver as being this, really the, the, the uh, sensor of uh, the ferritin. And it will measure or it'll assess how much iron is in my ferritin. And if there is enough iron in your ferritin, then the liver is going to produce just the right amount of transferrin. Number three, but understand that you will not be measuring laboratory-wise transferrin. Transferrin is now called in, on your labs as TIBC, total iron binding capacity. All I'm doing here is setting up the organization of this graph with the different and important iron study labs. Number one, serum iron. Number two, ferritin. Ferritin has an inverse relationship with liver, meaning to say that if you have too much iron and ferritin, then you'll have decreased TIBC. Remember, transferrin is not what they're going to put in your labs, but you know that transferrin is equivalent to total iron binding capacity. Next, number four, do not get your binding capacity confused with uh, this little box that we see on the left, the column, and this column that you see here is your iron, which is being saturated. So number four is called transferrin saturated. It's very, very easy to confuse your transferrin with your transferrin saturation. Hence, they call transferrin, laboratory-wise, a total iron binding capacity. These are the four that we keep playing around with. At this point, all I'm doing, laying down the foundation as to how to play with these. What are they again? Serum iron, number two, ferritin, inverse relationship with TIBC, and number four, saturation. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.